56 Dan Electra releases the UB2 six string bass guitar. The scale length was about 30 inches and tuned E to E, the same octave as a traditional bass. Can you tell us some of the specific uses to which you put some of these. Start with this one, for example. All right, which one? This one yeah. right here? Mm -hmm. uh, this is the uh, bass guitar. It's a six string bass guitar, and the lowest note is the same pitch as the uh, regular bass viol, and this is used uh, an awful lot in rock and roll. Mm -hmm. Familiar sound. Then in 1959, Dan Electro redesigns it, discontinuing the UB2 and releasing a Longhorn 4623 and Shorthorn 3612, giving you the option of purchasing a four-string and six-string version of both. If you were wondering what the difference was between a six-string bass and a baritone guitar of this era, it's simply a lighter set of strings tuned to a higher pitch on the same instrument. But popular use of baritone tunings came much later. The original idea for the six-string bass was to create a more versatile electric bass, considering the concept was still new at the time. However, Fender released the precision bass a few years earlier than Dan Electro did, and that would prove to be the king of electric bass today. But Dan Electro's bass found itself in an important role. In comparison to Fender's precision bass, the Dan Electro had an extended, wider frequency range than the standard four-string or upright, finding its place in history inside the top recording studios of the day, especially in Nashville. Session players like Harold Bradley developed the tic-tac style, doubling the upright bass, giving it a more driving rhythmic feel. And before Fender's precision bass was even accepted on major records, the six-string bass was the standard. This is Harold Bradley talking about how he used it in the 50s. 
Well, the Tic Tac, yeah. As far as I can't tell exactly what year, it's 1958 or 59 that they developed these uh, instruments. And they're $90 a piece of junk, but with a fantastic sound, you know. And uh, this one is the original one that I used on Crazy. And uh, I used it on uh, Devil in Disguise with Elvis. It's on a lot of Roy Orbison's records. It's on Brenda Lee's records. One of the most famous ones is Crazy. Here's an example of a tic-tac line with an upright bass. major hit records throughout the 60s and 70s. My favorite examples of it is Grady Martin's instrumental records and his use of it with the first fuzz tone effects ever heard. It was also popularly used in spaghetti western film scores. Probably the most notable is Ennio Morricone. I'm particularly partial to Glenn Campbell's lead tone on Wichita Lineman. I frequently listen to it for reference when setting up my own amp to record. I hope this helps the few of you out there breaking into the six string bass. See y'all next time.